Okay, so I might spend a lot of money here, as you can see. Sony? I'm a Sony guy. I want a camera. I want an A7C Mark II. Do I spend the money here today? Stay tuned to find out. One hour later. Uh, we're heading towards the Vistech sales booth, as you can see right over there. Um, and I might buy myself a camera. We have uh, Kyle on the cam. We have Nicole uh, spawning him. And uh, I'm about to go blow $3,000, depending on when I actually get the camera. In the Toronto store, that's... Queen Street, yep. Hey, I'm the brand new owner of a a7C Mark II. Did I influence this purchase? Yes, 100 percent Yesterday I made a very brash and irresponsible purchasing decision and purchased a new camera body. Let's talk about it. So for those who are familiar with my channel and my videos and my journey as a creative up until this point, you know that I primarily shoot all my content on the Sony a7S III. I actually purchased this camera almost three years ago to the date. I realized I bought it like November 9th, 2020. So I've had this for three years now and ever since upgrading from my Sony a6300 to this, I pretty much have never looked back and I will stand by saying that this is probably the single best camera gear purchase I have ever made in my career so far. And up until this point, I haven't really found the need to replace this camera at all. It's not only been with me through major career milestones and not only have I taken this to a lot of places and shot a lot of really cool sporting events with this, but it's also just done everything I've ever asked of it from a video capabilities perspective and it's helped me grow and improve as a filmmaker and a storyteller in general, which is why I'm still not replacing this camera. Instead, I'm actually going to be adding a second camera body to my repertoire with this guy and this is the Sony a7C Mark II and I'm going to explain why I ended up purchasing this camera. So yesterday I was at Profusion Toronto with two of my closest friends, Kyle and Nicole, and if you guys don't know what Profusion is, just a massive video photo convention held here in Toronto where all the big biggest brands and filmmaking and photography are there and it's a really cool event and I naturally gravitated to the Sony booth when we got there and they had pretty much every camera and lens under the sun that you could try out there and I've been eyeing the Sony a7C Mark II for the longest time now and so when I finally got my hands on it and tried the demo version before I knew it, my credit card was in the machine, and now we're here, I am the proud owner of an A7C Mark II. Now for at least the last four or five months, I've been continuously debating whether or not I should add a second camera body to my repertoire, because as great as the A7S III has been for me, specifically for video content, it absolutely crushes it, but it obviously does then lack a little bit in the photo department due to the 12 megapixel sensor in the camera. And for the majority of time that I'm shooting sports, I have this rigged up primarily to shoot video. So it is pretty cumbersome and annoying to use for photography when it's in that setup. Now, in terms of my other cameras that I have in my possession, I obviously have the Fuji X100V, and this is a great photo camera in on its own. But one of the biggest drawbacks is one of the things that makes this camera so unique, and that's the fixed 23 millimeter lens, which is great for photography to a certain extent, but it definitely limits its usefulness to a certain degree when subjects are far away from my camera. In the past, I've also used the Sony a7 III to primarily capture stills. The thing is, this is actually not my camera. This is my friend Nicole's who's let me borrow it on and off for at least the last year and a bit. I think I've had this now in my room for at least six months. So Nicole, if, if you're watching this, I'm gonna get this back to you very, very soon. I've used this camera a ton for still photography and you can actually see the photos back here are actually some I've taken with this photo and it's fantastic for stills. The thing is, when it comes to video capabilities, it's a little bit outdated and it is really hard to match with my Sony a7S III because this is only an 8-bit camera compared to to the S3, which is a 10-bit camera and much more flexible when it comes to color grading. That all being said, it was definitely high time for me to add a second full frame camera to my gear kit. And one like the Sony a7C Mark II just adds a lot of features that check off a lot of boxes for me in terms of what I'm looking for when I'm purchasing a camera. One of the biggest selling points for me is having a camera that has great hybrid capabilities, meaning that this can take great photo and great video. I didn't need to buy another dedicated video camera, which is a big reason why I didn't end up just getting something like an FX3 or an FX30, which may have seemed like the obvious choices for me as a filmmaker working in the video space. So the next choices for me apart from that were something like the a7 IV or this guy right here. Now the a7 IV is arguably the best hybrid camera on the market right now and what Sony did with this camera is that they took all the features and things that made the a7 IV a great camera and putting it into a smaller compact body and I think that was one of the other big draws for me is the fact that I already have a bigger full frame camera in my a7S III. I wanted something a little lighter, a little more compact to carry along with me whenever I needed a second body which is why I went with this instead of the big brother counterpart in the a7 IV. Quality wise this camera can shoot up to 4k 60 I'm pretty sure 
sure the 4K60 isn't a crop, however, but it also shoots full frame 4K30 and 4K24. But most importantly, this camera has internal 10-bit 422 recording, just like my Sony a7S III. Not only does that mean that I'm able to really push the colors coming out of this camera, but I'm able to match it almost exactly to my Sony a7S III, and that's gonna be really key for me as I wanna use this camera in conjunction to shoot sports games with my main camera, but also if I'm ever doing any documentary style work with an interview and I'm using two camera setups, it's just gonna be very easy to match it later in post, something I definitely struggled with when trying to use this as a B camera for video. There are also two really cool, interesting features that utilize AI in this camera that caught my attention. One, apparently the autofocus system is AI driven, and not only is it Sony's best autofocus system to date, but apparently the AI in it allows it to like kind of estimate and guess where your subject is gonna be in the frame, which is really exciting. I thought the focus system on the S3 was fantastic and it's never let me down up to this point. So just hearing that this has probably the best autofocus in the market has me really excited to try it out, especially when it comes to sports. You have a lot of moving subjects and things in front of the frame. So I'm excited to see how this thing holds up in those scenarios. And the second AI feature about this camera is like the auto reframing feature that Sony's been pushing that basically like kind of keeps your subject in the middle of the frame and crops in to kind of make it seem like this camera is moving by itself. It's a really interesting tool. I don't know how I'm gonna use it yet. It might not be for sports, but I could see myself making a lot of social content with this camera with that feature in general. Photo wise, this guy has a 33 megapixel sensor, the exact same sensor, if I'm not mistaken, out of the Sony a7 IV. And so this thing is gonna take some unbelievable images. I've never used the Sony a7 IV myself. However, I have so many friends who use it and take unbelievable high quality photos on it. So I'm really just excited to see what photos I can take on a smaller version of that camera. And that leads us to what I'm actually going to be using this camera for. And I already mentioned a few things that I'm thinking about using it for, but there are a lot of situations where I can see myself taking full advantage of the features that this camera carries. Now, my Sony a7S III isn't going anywhere. It's going to remain my main video shooter because the quality of this camera is still far better than what this can offer. Even though this can shoot up to 4K 60, my Sony a7S III can shoot up to 4K 120, and it also shoots 4K 60 without a crop. This does shoot 120 frames, by the way, it's just only in 1080p HD. Now, one of the ways I can see myself shooting sports videos on this camera is by using it primarily as a gimbal camera. And I know a lot of people are gonna be like, Juan, you hate gimbals, and that's true. I'm not really a big fan of them. And one of the biggest reasons for that is that every time I wanna put my Sony a7S III on a gimbal, I have to take off all the rigging that I have on it. For my handheld rig on this camera, I have handles, I have a V-mount battery, a bunch of different accessories. And in order to put this on a stabilizer, I need to take that off and that takes some time. Then when I'm done with it on the gimbal, I wanna go back to a handheld setup. I gotta put all the rigging back on and I'm just wasting valuable time. So by having a camera like this locked off on the gimbal with a lens ready to go, I'm able just to put this camera down and then effectively use the gimbal with the A7C Mark II. It's also a smaller, lighter camera, which will make it easier to balance. And who knows, maybe I'll actually end up falling in love with gimbals more, but that is one way I'm planning on using this as a primary gimbal camera. The other way I think I can use this is just by having this slung over my shoulder with a different lens to give myself a different focal length to the snap of a finger if I ever need to switch really quickly between lenses. For example, say I'm shooting focal ball on the Sony a7S III and I have the 70 to 200 on this camera. I might throw on the 28 to 75 or the 16 to 35 on this one and say the play is getting closer to me or there's a situation where I want to capture it a little wider or at a different focal length. I don't need to switch the lenses on my a7S III. I can just put that one down, pull this one up, take some video and be done with it. Again, it's more about efficiency and saving myself time in this. So just by having this over my shoulder with a different lens, I'm definitely going to get a lot of use out of it. And the other way I'm planning on using this, like I said, this is probably going to be my primary stills camera when I'm out shooting sports. I know sports photography isn't something I've talked about much in this channel because I'm just learning about it more and more every single day and I want to become a little bit more knowledgeable about it before I talk on it here. But sports photography is something I've definitely fallen in love with over the last few years. A lot of you guys know with the job I have with the NHL, I've had a really cool opportunity to shoot some major sporting events like the Stanley Cup Final and the Winter Classic. And one of my main responsibilities with the NHL in those moments is not just to capture video content, but also to capture photo content as well. And and it definitely forced me to get good at it really quickly and putting myself in a very uncomfortable situation. But like I said, I've really fallen in love with it and I'm really excited to bring my camera to those events in the future if I ever get to go to them again and shoot stills with this in a much higher quality than I was doing before. And when it comes to just having this slung over my shoulder ready at a moment's notice to take photo or video, it's just great that this is a small form factor camera. I love my a7S III, but it is definitely a lot bigger and clunkier. This is the perfect size for a secondary camera in my opinion. The only drawback to the size being the fact that there's only 
one SD card slot, but that is exactly why this is my secondary camera and not my primary one. This is also gonna be a great B camera for any multi-camera shoots I might find myself in. Lately on the side, I've been doing a lot more documentary and short film work. So this is gonna be a great camera I can use as a secondary angle for any interview situations, or also one that I can just throw on in a tripod to capture behind the scenes of the process that I do to shoot a different project like a documentary or a short film, and then use this footage to break that down here on YouTube for you guys. I also think this camera, just because of the size and the features it has, is just gonna inspire me to create content on a more frequent basis, whether it's capturing content for YouTube and TikTok for you guys, or even just using this to document my life in the day-to-day, -day, whether I'm by myself or with my friends and family. This is gonna allow me just to capture and be more creative on a more frequent basis and something that'll help me grow as a creator in general. Overall, I think the Sony a7C Mark II is a great option for sports filmmakers and content creators, which is why I bought it myself. That being said, I obviously haven't used it yet considering I just bought it yesterday, so I'm not gonna tell you to go rush out and buy it right now. I wanna put it through its paces and then give you guys my honest opinion. However, I am still very excited by the prospect of having a small camera body like this with excellent photo and video features to capture sports with. If you guys have any questions about this camera, if there's anything specific you want me to test out in the sports field, let me know in the comments down below. Let me know if you're thinking about getting one of these. I'm very happy to give you guys guidance if you're not sure what camera to buy. And I'm very excited to then down the line give you guys my first impressions and thoughts as I go along with it. If you guys have made it to this point in the video, thank you guys so much for watching. I know I definitely rambled on for a little bit too long about this, so thank you guys for sticking with me. That all being said, if you guys like this video, if you learned anything, if I might have convinced you to get one of these yourself, make sure to leave it a like down below. And if you're new here and you want to see more content on the Sony a7C Mark II or more stuff on content creation in the sports world in general, make sure to subscribe below as well as I would really, really appreciate it. And that does it for me in this video. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.